I'm thinking he's back. <laughs> Pretty good Keanu impression, right? Not bad. I've been working on it. Um, yeah. John Wick. <laughs> are you pissed off, John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. Uh, John Wick 3. Uh, Chad Stah- Stahelski back mm-hmm. at the helm. Nailed it. 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. As I said early, at the beginning of the show, unseated Avengers Endgame at 53 million at the box office. Um, More than that. Man. It was like 57. Oh, got 57. I, Arc yeah. Light 53. I mean, man, guns, lots of guns. Like <laughs> this, uh, this is a, a brutal, gory, action packed film. Uh, and I loved it. John Wick has somehow become probably the. Th- that and like the Fast and Furious films are the best action movies uh, that are consistently made of that and Mission Impossible as well, obviously. Thank you. Um, I mean, th- those three are, are just undeniable uh, franchises at this point. How did you feel about John Wick 3? Were you at, were you as pleased with it as I was? I was pleased with it, uh, but I'm actually uh, thinking, here's the but qualifier coming, right? Uh, Comparing it to the other John Wicks, it's actually my least favorite. Hmm. I think is uncommon take from the weekend. So, so tell me why. Um, so I think John Wick one works really well just because it's really self-contained story, discernible plot, makes sense throughout, and of course has the textbook amazing choreography, badass fighting, mm-hmm. gunplay, all that, and then two was like unexpected in how successfully it raised the stakes continues to build on this world in John wick, this assassin underbelly that's international, but we really see it through the lens of New York city and they jet set around the world this time in Italy and more shadowy characters. We don't really learn much about this high table, but the groundwork is laid and the, again, probably most importantly, the fight choreography and then the overall action is leveled up. Mm-hmm. For for chapter three for Parabellum, I it was the first time watching any of these movies where I was just kind of like annoyed with the world because it just started to feel really obtuse to me. Specifically, the whole jaunt in the Sahara, meeting with mm-hmm. the Elder, which ultimately just felt like this weird dead end of sorts. And right before that, we go go see Braun and Halle Berry. And we have this really cool fight with the dogs over at the fucking mint for the gold coins. But none of it really like felt that consequential. Like I, this is the first time the plot just started to lose me, which was weird. I didn't expect this because this plot is set up. You know, we get a, we are in media res here. Like John is on the run. He McShane gave him an hour head start and then he's going to get fucked up. And I really liked it. It was simple. And excommunicado got, exactly and it got just a little more all over the place than i expected and ultimately i think it ends in a good place with the fight with mark Dacascos. but yeah i i don't know i just the story was just a little more muddled than i expected and wanted as a result yeah it was a lot of traveling a lot of moving around getting back and forth from one place to another um I thought the scenes were cool. I, I actually had a similar feeling like I'm not really sure why we had to go um, necessarily see Halle Berry. Like I, I felt like it didn't, yeah, I didn't feel like it all totally made sense. But then I was like, why? The f- why do I care this much about the plot of John Wick three? Because what I, what I go to John Wick to see is like really cool action sequences, um, enough intrigue about a world that's pretty cool to me and I find very intriguing to learn more about. Um, and I also just feel like this is probably the one time I like see gore to this level and I'm like, okay with it, hmm. you know, because I, I think that especially with uh, all the violence that there is just in society, it, it can feel a little bit like, do, do we need like this level of like something being grotesque and, this uh, I don't I don't feel like it. I feel like it's so surreal that I can't ever like say like, oh, someone's going. Like, How did you feel about the uh, eyeball puncture in like minute six or whatever it was? 
I uh, I covered my eyes for that. <laughs> I didn't watch that. I'll put it that way. I'm, I'm a bit of a baby when it comes to that sort of stuff. Um, so there were a lot of really cool fight sequences. It starts off with a fight with Boban. Yeah. How did you feel about that fight? Uh, again, it was a cool fight. He's fighting with a fucking book. Book. <laughs> you know, and with a fucking Boban pencil. is like seven three or whatever. I think he might be bigger than that. He's the heaviest guy in the NBA, tallest guy in the NBA. Um, and that was really cool because Boban, I thought actually acquitted himself pretty well for a non-actor. Yeah, and it, it didn't feel as gimmicky as the initial tease in the trailer made you assume. It's like, oh, Boban's in this, you know, he'll mm-hmm. get killed by John Wick, and it's like, okay, fine. But yep. it was actually a cool fight, and like, yes, Wick having shit stashed in a random folk fairy tale book in the New York Public Library is ridiculous. Doesn't seem any more ridiculous and other things we accept in this story mm-hmm. so that's fine um yeah i thought that was cool and really having that scene and then the other b- first fight scene where after his chase and he goes to that uh antique weapon place yeah. and they spend like about 50 seconds him retooling this revolver of sorts and picking the parts out just to shoot one dude and then be done with it uh <laughs> really cool but then brutality and the humor associated with him throwing all those knives and the hatchet and shuri can and all that 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 was fucking wild the the choreography i I was expecting the movie to keep going and again once the story got a little all over the place it kind of took me took me out of it because i thought it Mm -hmm. starts really fun yeah no i agree i thought the choreography in that antique shop or antique weapon brie was amazing um never was you know who actually wasn't that impressed with and this was uh asia kate dylan uh the adjudicator yeah the adjudicator it i get her role and it makes sense but just something about her just felt like it didn't totally work and i don't know if it was her performance um i don't know if it was the fact that the adjudicator is you know it's part of that mystery that we don't quite totally understand how the high table and the yeah. uh, person above that works you know there's it's a lot of like unknowns to that i think that that kind of made me feel like okay so why are why were they so afraid of this person um or why this person matters so much there were a lot of uh cameos in this jason manzoukas just TikTok uh, man yeah but didn't really have that much to do other than kind of walk around walk behind uh fishburn and then pick john right. wick up at the end um uh, fishburn was his normal hammy self in this which i thought was pretty yeah. awesome the Bowery King. <laughs> yes. Um, the underground is where stuff happens. Ian McShane uh, also was his normal yep. awesome self in this. I, I, I love just hearing him talk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, McShane's like post Deadwood career as just like older character actor has been really cool. Mm-hmm. And not that to say that he's only in good stuff like he's in american gods for example but winston is just a really fun aspect of the john wick story mm-hmm. and i was really happy that they kept him going in the story because there's a few times you think he might you know go away but the whole the whole like lore of the continental hotel and it's actually an international assassin hotel is just really really cool and Winston, actually, I feel like this is best the best movie for Winston because he has probably has the most lines, but he also has the most to do. But like in the be- in the beginning of Act Three, when they have that fight uh, at the Continental, when the guys with the body armor show up, he's just like chilling in the safe room, like drinking yeah. and like smile waving as they leave and come back, and mm-hmm. really funny. And then him uh, setting off the next movie by um, yapping Wick off this off the roof. You know, are they setting Winston up to be a true, true villain and thus get a lot more screen time for John Wick 4? Or is that more of like a he did what he had to do, John will understand type thing? It's kind of where I lean. But I mean, what do you think? Because I mean, obviously we like Ian McShane, but what, where do you think they're taking Winston as a character? Um, I think if Winston really wanted Wick dead, he would have shot him in the head because he knows that that suit is bulletproof. Um, right. I think he was either doing this knowing that Wick would probably have to die and this is a way that he could at least give him some time to get away. Um, 
or maybe he is a real he- heel turn, which would be awesome because he, he makes you, I think, would be a great villain <laughs> um, mm-hmm. in these films. Uh, overall, uh, I think they set up Wick 4 really well, especially putting Fishburne and, and uh, Reeves back together, you know, for four, I think will be awesome. Uh, just a couple of p- other people I wanted to shout out here. Uh, Lance Reddick, um, who yes, the plays the yeah, the concierge. I think his name is Sharon. Uh, yeah. him, him and Wick in that battle in the Continental was just incredible. When they come back, they're like, "Need yeah, more firepower," guns. and he's just like, <laughs> McShane's just like, "There you go," and like he's like <laughs> going through like which ones to grab. Just so awesome. Um, and you already mentioned uh, Dacascus. Deca- yes, who I thought him and the two twins uh, were awesome. And they add this real sense of like kung fu to the movie in terms of like the way that they fought which i thought was really awesome and the fight with the twins was great because they didn't kill wick even though they could have at different times they really just wanted to have like a good battle with him right i actually think uh they they kind of manifest a lot of this but the whole like presence of wick as like this celebrity in this underground world Mm -hmm. and how like those guys are like wick it's a pleasure to try and fuck you up right now Uh, they let (laughs) him get back on his feet before they attack him like that was really cool and I, I just kind of wish we got a little bit more of that like we spent a lot of time just in like the weird yeah nuances of this intergalactic under uh, underbelly yet if we focus a little bit more on just wicks like moment to moment as this underworld celeb i don't know it would have been cool but i mean that guy i mean yeah yan 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 ruhyan yeah from the raid uh, I mean, he briefly has a scene in The Force Awakens as well, but uh, people really compare the the action, the choreography to uh, the raid from which I'm like to the raid. And I think a lot of people are really clamming for uh, the guy who plays Rama in the raid to be in John Wick 4 in the future. Because uh, Mark Dukoski is another guy who is not really as famous as you think he should be because he's this really charismatic international actor. Mm-hmm. And he's a great turn in this movie. It's kind of a shame he dies, but. Yeah, I mean, John Wick 4, we obviously know what's happening. This is the most, this is the biggest opening weekend of any John Wick movie. In fact, it's opening weekend outgrossed the entire first movie's domestic run. And this movie actually, despite all the jet setting, only costs like 50 something million dollars. And it's about already, made a profit. already tripled that with and we got worldwide grossing. So it'll make a big profit in the coming weeks. Uh, and as you said, be a fast and furious. Mission Impossible to top top scale action franchises, and then I think John Wick is there because the franchise has never been more popular, and it's truly Keanu's second act or third act, I guess. So yeah, uh, even even if this wasn't my favorite of the movies, it's still really awesome that we have you know action movies like this continuing to get made. And honestly, shout out Lionsgate; they're the smallest and least successful of the major studios and john wick is is was, was them you know they um everyone else passed so it's a good win for them they needed it to wrap up wick talk just give me your top three uh action sequences in this film number one is the knife fight in the beginning mm-hmm. with in the museum thing number two is the fights in the mirror glass room at the end the coscus yeah. where they brutally like they throw each other into glass case after glass case (laughs) and it's they don't cut away you're watching the dude fucking slam through the glass and the stunt double fucking ate that shit like it's Mm -hmm. so hard crazy and then third i think is the the motorcycle scene kind of gave me some like dark knight vibes and i I, I guess it it didn't look as good as some of the other stuff because the camera's kind of up close and stuff but just watching uh, John, and even before that, on the horse, just like his uh, ability to freestyle and like audible on the fly while he's surviving and fucking murdering people. It's uh, just entertaining stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. N- number one for me is the antique uh, gun knife shop. What, what that you said was your number one. Yeah. I love when like they don't have anything to like kill each other with, so they each like take a second, like look around inside the cases next yeah. to them and break the glass. Like that was great such a humor. great, yeah, great moment. Um, Number two is the uh, escape from High Garden, or you know when they uh, when Bron shoots Haley Berry's dog and uh, yep. they go all out. I gotta be honest, like 
when seeing those dogs like mess people up or like when Haley Berry's like ah, and like the dog runs and jumps off her back and gets the guy that's like the, like two stories up. I was like, holy mm-hmm. crap, like this is incredible. It's like the dogs in Call of Duty World yeah. at War that you had no hope of surviving whenever <laughs> someone called them in. <laughs> no hope. Um, and then also at the end of that, when she's like, he shot my dog and John was like, I get it. Like it <laughs> just like one of those great moments that uh, calls back to obviously one of the earlier one, uh, the first wick. And then the twin fight uh, we talked about, I just thought that was just a really awesome, uh, really well choreographed scene. Um, and again, the humor in it, like there's a point where like Wick gets knocked down. They don't kill him for the second time. And he like puts mm-hmm. a hand up like, all right, give me a second. Like <laughs> They're like, hey, slow down. He's like, well, we'll see. Uh, just really, really good. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's wild shit. And, you know, it, ultimately, I think what's cool about Wick is that it's unabashedly rated R. It's unabashedly adult action yeah. drama really just action but that's not common anymore because usually doesn't make any money so as i said like lionsgate got got the hit here and it's not going away that's for sure 